Hello Options Traders, welcome everyone. And I wanted to just do a quick follow-up video to the previous one that I posted about how to beta weight your options portfolio. So for the stock traders that we may have in this group, let's take a look at how you would beta weight your stock portfolio. So if you have questions on what beta is, what it means to beta weight, I will refer you to the previous video. Again, it's entitled how to beta weight your options portfolio. So for this one, I'm just going to make it very short and get right into the mechanics of how to create that beta weight calculation if you are just holding shares of stock. So here we are in the Excel spreadsheet and I've got four hypothetical stocks here. So let's say that we have $10,000 sitting in stock one, 20,000 in stock two, 30,000 in stock three, and 40,000 in stock four for a total of $100,000 in the entire portfolio. The first calculation we have to do, just like it is when you're beta waiting for options, is to figure out the percentage of each asset here for the entire portfolio. So if I have $10,000 in this first stock out of $100,000 total, 10% of my money is sitting in stock number one. So I'm just taking this number divided by this number and getting this 10%. For stock number two, $20,000 divided by 100,000 is 20% and so on. So we get those. Next, we have to input the beta, which again, you can find at finance.yahoo.com. Your broker's platform should have it, but you're just going to plug those numbers in. The next calculation is to come up with the actual beta, the beta weight here. So we're going to do the same thing that we did for the options. I'm just going to take the percent of the portfolio, 10%, times the beta 1.2 and get 0.12. For stock number two, 20% times 1.2 beta gives me a 0.24 beta weight. So again, what this means is that we are weighting the portfolio according to how much or what percent is being held at each of these betas. And once we do that, come up here and add them up and I get a total beta of 1.35. So as before, this means that my portfolio here of these four stocks is 1.35 times riskier or more sensitive to changes in the S&P 500. Now, one thing you might be wondering is why did we get a much higher beta for the options beta weighting? And that's because options have an elasticity. And that's what I talked about in that video. That's why your betas are going to get very big quickly for an options portfolio. But you can see here for a stock portfolio, even though these are much higher betas than I used in the previous video, not really getting a very big beta. And that's because these aren't options. So if you're kind of wondering why this seems relatively low, it's because of the elasticity that we talked about in the options video. So the next calculation is to figure out the level of the S&P 500 index, whether you want to use SPX or SPY. I'm going to do an example of SPY right now. I'll do another one of SPX in a moment. But SPY trading at about 270. So my next step to figure out the total beta weighted portfolio or the beta equivalent number of shares is to take the dollar value that I have in my portfolio divided by the price of the SPY. So in other words, if I had $100,000 and rather than buying these four stocks, I decided to just buy SPY shares, I could get 370.37 shares. So let's just call it 370 shares. So to find the raw number of shares, take the dollar value of the portfolio divided by the level of SPY. But just like with the options video, this doesn't mean that my portfolio is behaving like 370 shares of SPY because I've got a beta of 1.35. I need to multiply this number, 370, times 1.35. And that gives me a beta equivalent of 500 shares. So now that very simply tells me if I wish to hedge this portfolio, even though I'm not holding SPY shares anywhere, it's mathematically behaving about like 500 SPY shares. So I could just simply buy five put options. And then I would be reasonably hedged for any percentage falls in the SPY. So if the S&P 500 falls 1%, I'm going to just about offset that loss by owning these five put options. So now let's take a look at SPX. SPX is trading at about 2,700. So if instead we wanted to weight it against SPX, 
We have $100,000 portfolio divided by $2,700 per share for the SPX. And now you can see one of the problems when you start hedging with SPX. The portfolio is only behaving like 50 shares of SPX. Well, remember that each put option controls 100 shares of stock. I can't buy a half a contract. So if I even buy one put option, I really have twice as much insurance as I need. So what could I do? This is where traders will say, let's try to get a better fit. I can fine tune this a little better by using a cheaper index. So the SPY again is a one tenth index. And by using SPY put options, I can now buy five of them because my portfolio is behaving like 500 shares. So you can see that the idea is exactly the same, same calculations that we used for the options. The big difference is that we don't have an options elasticity, and that's what's keeping these beta weights relatively low. So I hope that helps you to understand how to beta weight your portfolio if you have just shares of stock. Now, if you have combinations of stock and options, you'll just blend the two calculations that I did in these videos. For your options, you'll need to add the elasticity and otherwise just use these calculations. And then the steps are identical. But at least this will help you to understand how to do it and what your broker's platform is actually showing if it has the ability to show you your beta weighted values. If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.